All right, welcome to the video. This is our diagram here. We have our main Splunk server. It's going to function as our indexer, our monitoring console, the search head, and our license master. It's going to be called our main Splunk server. And then we're also gonna have a Linux universal forwarder. We're gonna set this up in AWS. And eventually we will get to more complex architecture designs where we have indexers one, two, and three that are clustered. And we have our main Splunk server function as our monitoring console, our deployment server, and our license master. We involve three universal forwarders. We're from different OSs and a master node. But for now, we'd really just like to focus on this simple architecture setup right here and building this out in AWS. You can head over to AWS and go to your EC2 dashboard. Here I have nothing running yet. First thing I want to do is create a key pair. So you can click key pair, create key pair. And I'm going to just name this something I will remember. I'll call it my keys. Keep it on RSA in .pem. You can add a tag if you'd like. And then when you're ready, just click create key pair. This will go to your local instances download folder. So just remember that later on for you to grab it. Okay, now our key pair is set up. We'll need that later to SSH into our instance. Now we can go to our EC2 dashboard and click launch instance, launch instance. We're gonna give the server a name that we're spinning up. Sticking with our diagram, I labeled it main Splunk server. So that's what I will call it here, main Splunk server. Now we need to select an AMI. An AMI is an Amazon machine image. I'm going to pick Amazon Linux. You can pick Ubuntu or any kind of uh, lightweight Linux OS that you'd like to have your Splunk server operate on. I'm gonna have it on 64-bit architecture and something that has decent hardware specs recommended for a Splunk server. So here are all the different Amazon Linux AMIs that AWS offers. I'll select something with eight virtual cores. And this one has 16 and 30 gig memory. Um, that's probably better. Based on hardware specs, you do want your search head to have 16 virtual cores allocated um, and decent memory. I'll give it my key pairs that I created just now of my keys. And in the network settings, most of this is going to stay the same, but you're going to edit, if you'd like to, your own VPC. So here I have the default VPC, your virtual private cloud that AWS gives you, and you can select a default subnet with that default VPC if you just want to spin it up. For me, I'm going to create a new VPC as I've had multiple in the past and I'd like to just keep my nomenclature organized. So I'm going to create VPC, label it VPC and more, and I'm going to call it Splunkville. So I know that this virtual private cloud is allocated to my Splunk project. And I'm also very lazy and I don't want to type 172. I'd rather type 10 dot. So I'm choosing that as my private IPs. You can go ahead through those settings and then just create the VPC and then you can view it and it's available. My IPv4 CIDR range is a 10.0 hack 16, uh, which is what I selected and it's called Splunkville. If you um, click on your VPC dashboard and click on it, you can view those details at the bottom as well. Okay, looks good. So I'm gonna assign that to this Linux instance that we're spinning up. You might have to click refresh for your new VPC to populate. Um, subnet, we do wanna assign a subnet to it. 
And if you want to auto assign a public IP, you can. Going down towards the bottom, I'm going to leave the, leave the security group settings all as the same. But uh, we do want to make two rules to ensure that they're enabled because we want to SSH to it. We're going to enable port 22, but only from my IP. I don't want to have port 22 open from anywhere. So I'll select my IP. So I'll be able to SSH to it. And then I'm going to add another rule related to Splunk Web, and that's going to run on port 8000. So I'm going to add that in as well. So I can navigate to Splunk Web on TCP port 8000 from my IP. Those are the two firewall rules that you want to enable for your security groups. All the other settings just leave the same. I didn't change the name or anything. And here is our um, volume setup. Um, so I'm probably just going to bump this up to 50. And um, leave it at that. And then the advanced details didn't change anything in here. I'm going to leave it all blank or whatever their default setting was in here. All right, reviewing this instances, it's only going to be one. I only need one Splunk server. This is the Amazon machine image that I selected. My uh, Linux 2 with the amount of gigs of RAM and uh, CPUs needed. Um, my VPC looks correct. I have my keys on it. Um, check out my instance. Okay, everything looks good. So I'm um, going to click launch instance. And we have forgotten to add a subnet. Okay, that's no problem. We will add a subnet that works with our VPC based on our availability zone as well. So you can pick whichever one you'd like um, with the number of IP addresses available. That's way more than I will ever need. Um, so I'll just go with the 10.0.16.0 hack 20 uh, for this VPC of our 10.0 hack 16 range. And then you can go ahead and launch. Of course, another failure. Uh, that AMI is not supported by our region for our availability zone. So I need to select a different AMI. You may or may not get the same error. If you do, just go ahead and um, select another Linux AMI um, that kind of has the same hardware specs that we were looking for. So sorting by uh, memory or CPUs. Um, I'd really like to get something with at least 16, but I don't need a hell of a lot of memory. Um, so I'll select the C4 large, 16 CPUs, 30 memory. And I'll go ahead and launch that. And that works for our availability zone. And our EC2 instance is up. There is the name. If you click on it, these are the details about it. And uh, now it is running. So now we need to allocate a public IP to this instance as well. So you can click allocate an IP and you click the orange button on the top right, allocate elastic IP address. This will make a new public IP address that you're gonna pay for. And looks like we got the dot 200 here. And then you're gonna select associate this elastic IP address. And I'm gonna select my instance that we just created, my main Splunk server. And my private IP address is already assigned to that as well. So it's a dot four eight that falls within our 10.0 hack 16 range. And I will associate that to be its public IP address. So now we have our instance configured with a private and public IP in its own VPC of Splunkville. We can go back to our dashboard um, probably want to remove any of the public IPs or, you know, release them back to Amazon. Otherwise you're going to pay for them. So any that you're not using, just go ahead and select them and release them. 
just keep the one or two uh, that you're actively using um, as allocated to you because you will be paying to have that uh, non-changing public IP. Uh, I don't want mine to change, so I'm just going to keep it with me. Um, it costs a little bit more, but preference-wise, I'll always know what my public range is, or my public IP is for that server. So now we're going to connect to it. The key pair that we had created in the beginning, that went to our local computers downloads folder. So it gives you the directions on the left for how to connect to it. I'm going to follow the instructions verbatim. So I'll move to my downloads folder, I'm going to change the permission on the key pair file that I have. And then the fourth step there is how to connect to it. Um, or sorry, the example below in step four, uh, this SSH tag I using your keys, uh, stuck with EC2 user for the time being, and then copy the rest of it at that AMI. Go ahead and click enter. And then are you sure you want to connect? Yes. And we have successfully SSH'd into our main Splunk server instance. Make this a little bit bigger. And we're there. You can do some information grabbing if you want from it, but now we're ready to install Splunk on this server. Go to Splunk Downloads, log into your account, and it's the same process for downloading and installing Splunk for, for practice. You know, we're just downloading Splunk Enterprise, selecting the correct OS. I'm going to do Linux in the TGZ uh, file extension. I'm going to grab this wget command, copy this, because I'm going to install it from the command line. So now we're back on our Linux instance. Just going to make these full screen here so it's easier to switch back and forth. I'm going to clean this up, uh, make it a little bit bigger so it's easier to read. And our first command is going to be making the directory that we're going to install Splunk for. That's going to be opt Splunk for Linux and program files for Windows. So we're going to make the directory, move into it, see that it's empty, and then we're going to make the owner of opt Splunk the user that you're currently logged in as. So for here, stuck with EC2 user, that's fine. But now me operating as the EC2 user, I have ownership of opt Splunk. Now we're making sure that we're in opt Splunk and we're going to use the wget command to now download Splunk Enterprise 9.0. So you can type that wget in, paste it in, let it run to completion, and Splunk will install on this instance. Great. Now if we look at the directory again, there's our tgz file that we downloaded from Splunk Web. This is very important. Use the correct tar command when extracting when, when untarring this file. Switch options are XZV, capital C. Then you want to do on the entire op directory, tech F, and on that tar on the Splunk TGZ file. If you use the incorrect tar command, that's where you run into problems with having double directories and just improper installs of not properly untarring the Splunk enterprise package. So when you do an LS, you should be able to go opt Splunk bin like we can here. You don't want to go opt uh, Splunk Splunk bin or something like that. So make sure you use the right tar command. Uh, and now we're in bin. This is where we'll find the Splunk command that we'll get familiar with the, a few commands here. So the first command uh, well, we want to check the status of Splunk. We haven't started it yet. Um, when you do start it, you can just do, you know, forward, flat, forward slash Splunk start. Uh, here we'll just do a status, accept the license. Um, this is where we're going to set up our username and password. So username, going to put Haley and do an eight character complex password here. Confirm your password. And 
it says Splunk D is not running because we did a Splunk status. So we need to start Splunk. We're going to do that with the Splunk command as well. It's just going to be Splunk start. And this gets it up and running. We have the success message there for OK. And now it's waiting to have Splunk Web be available on our local instance loopback at port 8000. So now it says it is now available at this website. So we can now copy this and from our local machines browser, because of the security groups that we enabled in AWS, we said we want to be able to SSH to it on 22 and enable port 8000 as part of our firewall rules. We're now going to be able to use either the public IP address or that exact copied command to access Splunk Web um, at port 8000. So you won't be able to get to it through HTTPS because we haven't enabled that yet. So for now, just use HTTP and access Splunk Web and log in with the credentials that we set up in the command line. Okay, now we can configure our settings. So go to settings, server settings, and this is where you wanna change some stuff in general settings. So we can click general settings and Splunk server name. Let's change that to match our topology and our architecture. So back in our main diagram, uh, we called it main Splunk server. I'll keep it the same keep the management port the same. And right here, enable HTTPS for Splunk Web. We're gonna put yes. Keep 8,000 the same. Session timeout for an hour is fine. And I'm gonna also change my default host name. This is the host value for when events are coming from the server, what's gonna show up. I like to change this too. So Splunk main server is fine. And the KV store default port, we don't wanna change that either. Let's go ahead and click save. Um, server name, numbers, underscores, dashes. Okay, so we can't have spaces, obviously. So I'll just fix that real quick and then click save. And our settings have successfully saved. Now we're gonna do a Splunk restart. So we can go to settings, server controls, restart Splunk, click okay. Go back to the CLI. We can check the status of it to see if it's up and running again. And it is running. So when you go to it again for HTTPS, you're gonna get this warning error that, um, you know, the um, certificates aren't known um, or valid. Go ahead and accept the risk. And now you're able to log in via HTTP, HTTPS instead of HTTP and our web is up. So we have successfully set up our Splunk server here. If we go back to our CLI, um, we can just get familiar with a couple of other commands that are useful um, for be beginner Splunkers. Um, clear my screen. So we've already seen a couple of them and we can go over Splunk enable boot start this you will have to run for Linux instances with the accept license um, flag as well. So we don't have to click through the license. Uh, of course, we need a sudo. Um, it is best practice to not run as root user when installing and configuring Splunk. So get used to typing sudo a bunch of times. And there we have it. Splunk is now enabled to start every time we stop and you know boot up again. Splunk will automatically start in the background. We can do stop. Restart, those are self-explanatory. Um, Splunk command, you can also do uh, show Splunk D port. And you'll have to enter your credentials for you know the first couple of times you do this, um, unless the commands are close together. So enter your credentials and you see Splunk port is at 8089. You can also do web port, that's at 8000. These are just enumeration commands to get familiar with. Uh, you can show your server name, just ignore the certificate error. 
It's a main Splunk server, like we had set it in Splunk Web. And you can show um, default host name as well. And these are all the settings that we had changed in the front end GUI under settings, general settings. We can do a Splunk status. It is up and running. We've seen that one before. So these are all good commands to get used to. If you'd like, you can go set up your monitoring console. So that's under settings, monitoring console. And then when you're in the MC, you can go to settings, general setup. And we want to make sure the correct roles are assigned to this server instance. So we can edit our server roles. Here you can check and uncheck whatever is applicable. For our diagram, we said we want it to be an indexer, an MC, a search head, and a license master. So I will leave those and uncheck KB store and click save. And there we go. You can click apply changes and do a refresh. And that's that. You can also check out your uh, health check items. You can disable or re-enable any ones that you would like to monitor and go back to the overview. So this is our Linux instance. Looks like we have almost 30 gigs of memory and we have our eight CPU cores, which is the same as 16 virtual cores like we set in AWS. And you can scroll through your monitoring console. When you're done using your resources, it's important to not accumulate any more charges than you need to on AWS. So go ahead to instance state and stop your instance. And when you're ready to resume it, you can start it back up again. But congratulations, you've successfully leveraged services in AWS to set up a Splunk server.